Good day guys! Today, we shall continue the series of lecture videos for criminal law. Ang mga lecture videos na ito shall only be short, compact, and direct to the point. We shall only cover the salient topics and provisions of the Revised Penal Code, various jurisprudence, doctrines, principles, and selected special penal laws. This lecture series can actually be used by criminology, political science, and legal management students. However, all students who are taking up criminal law and all those who want to learn about the criminal laws, including the senior high school students, are very welcome here in our lecture series. For this lecture video, we shall discuss conspiracy and proposal to commit a felony. So, let us now start our discussion. Conspiracy has two kinds. One is conspiracy as a crime and the other one is conspiracy as a mode of incurring criminal liability. Article 8 of the Revised Penal Code pertains to the conspiracy as a crime. It provides that conspiracy and proposal to commit a felony are punishable only in the cases in which the law especially provides a penalty therefore. Hence, conspiracy as a crime is only applicable to cases such as 1. Conspiracy or proposal to commit treason under Article 15 of the Revised Penal Code 2. Conspiracy or proposal to commit rebellion or coup d'etat under Article 136 of the Revised Penal Code 3. Conspiracy or proposal to commit sedition under Article 141 of the Revised Penal Code 4. Conspiracy to commit arson under Section 7 of PD 1613 5. Conspiracy to commit a crime involving trafficking of dangerous drugs under Section 26 of Republic Act 9165. 6. Conspiracy to commit terrorism under Section 4 of Republic Act 9372. 7. Conspiracy to commit child pornography under Section 4 of Republic Act 9775. And 8. Conspiracy to commit money laundering under Section 4 of Republic Act 9160 as amended by Republic Act 10365. Here, the mere proposal or agreement of two or more persons to commit the above-mentioned crimes is already a crime, and they can be held liable for such proposal or agreement to commit the said crimes. But what is conspiracy and proposal to commit a felony in the first place? Now, under Article 8 of the Revised Penal Code, a conspiracy exists when two or more persons come to an agreement concerning the commission of a felony and decide to commit it. Meanwhile, there is proposal when the person who has decided to commit a felony proposes its execution to some other person or persons. There are three requisites of conspiracy as a crime. First, there must be an agreement to commit a crime. Second, the conspirators must be decided to commit such crime. And third, there must be a law prescribing a penalty for conspiring to commit such crime. This means that even though two or more persons agreed to commit a crime, if no specific law prescribes for the penalty for such conspiracy, then they will not commit conspiracy as a crime. For example, sina Juan at Pedro ay nag-inuman. Napag-usapan nila na masyadong mayabang o maangas ang bago nilang kapitbahay na si Ambo. Dahil sa dami ng nainom na nila, nagkasundo silang patayin si Ambo. Sa lakas ng kanilang pag-uusap, narinig sila ng kapatid ni Ambo na si Ambet. Kaya naman nagsumbong si Ambet sa mga pulis at sinabi niyang si Juan at Pedro ay dapat managot for committing conspiracy to commit a crime, particularly killing. In this case, nagkakamali si Ambet. This is because no such specific penalty is prescribed for conspiracy to commit a killing. Say for example, murder or homicide. However, in the instant case, even though conspiracy to commit a killing is not a crime in itself, if Juan and Pedro as conspirators committed the crime they agreed upon, then conspiracy shall be considered as a mode of incurring criminal liability. This is the second kind of conspiracy that we shall discuss. As a rule, 
the principle of conspiracy as a mode of committing a crime only applies to intentional felony. The concept of conspiracy, the elements of which include agreement and decision to commit a crime, runs inconsistent to culpable felony because persons cannot agree to decide to commit a culpable felony. However, merong isang exception dito at ito ay tinatawag na doctrine of conspiracy of silence or inaction. In Haka versus People, the court held that a city treasurer, a city accountant, and a city administrator were liable for violating Section 3E of the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act for gross inexcusable negligence and for committing conspiracy of silence or inaction. This is because a paymaster obtained cash advances despite the fact that she has previous unliquidated cash advances. The court found out na yung three officials who were held liable did not do their job in making sure that those who get cash advances have already liquidated their previous cash advances. Hence, merong silence or inaction on their part. Now, in knowing conspiracy as a mode of incurring criminal liability, we also have to be familiar with the collective responsibility rule. Under this rule, all conspirators are liable as co-principals regardless of the extent and character of their participation in the commission of the crime they agreed to commit. In the contemplation of the law, as jurisprudence dictates, the act of one is the act of all. Halimbawa, in People v. Lascano, the two accused were held to be liable for two counts of rape each on account of a clear conspiracy between them sa kanilang ginawang halinhinang panggagahasa sa isang kaawa-awang bulag. Here, each accused is not only liable for the rape committed by one but the rape committed by the other as well. So ganito yan, yung isang act ng rape ng isang accused, two counts na siya agad. This is how the collective responsibility rule operates. However, to make sure that the other conspirators are collectively responsible, it must also be established that he performed an act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Halimbawa, nagkasundo si Nawan at Pedro para patayin si Ambo. Nang biglang napadaan si Ambo, sinugod siya agad ni Juan at inundayan ng saksak. Tinamaan siya sa dibdib at naging sanhi ito ng agaran niyang kamatayan. Samantala, si Pedro naman ay gulat na gulat sa bilis na mga pangyayari. Wala siyang naging partisipasyon sa pagsaksak ni Juan kay Ambo. Here, though nagkaroon ng agreement kina Juan at Pedro to commit the killing of Ambo, Pedro should not be liable as a co-conspirator dahil he did not perform any act in furtherance of the killing. Clearly, gulat na gulat pa nga siya sa bilis ng pangyayari. However, a person can be liable as a conspirator kahit di siya gumawa ng any act in furtherance of a felony if he is the mastermind of the crime. Also, he can be liable as a principal by inducement. We will be going deeper into this as we discuss the persons criminally liable for felonies. Now, to sum it up, we have to remember that conspiracy can be a crime in itself and it can be a mode of incurring criminal liability. It is a crime in itself when there are penalties prescribed by laws for such conspiracy. Meanwhile, it is a mode of incurring criminal liability and it only applies to intentional felony as a general rule. It is also worth noting that under the collective responsibility rule, the act of one co-conspirator is the act of all conspirators. If all of them perform acts in furtherance of the crime they committed. So, that's a wrap. See you again next time. I am Ian Gonzalez telling you alamin natin ang batas upang hindi tayo mamuhay ng marahas. Thank you and God bless.